Well, hey everyone, Logan's Farm here, and I'm going to start diving into this Kawasaki 700 Prairie that I have to fix the issue with the carburetor. Hopefully it's just a pinched gasket and I can just get a new set and a uh, pinched O-ring gasket on the float bowl. But before we start, this is not necessarily a how-to. This is just going to be me going through it. I am not an expert. I never claim to be. So, you might find some information useful, you might not, and um, I might be doing this wrong way, I might. But getting back to anybody that followed along from a previous video, what I was talking about this four-wheeler, is I took it into a shop when I got it here last summer. I just took it to a shop because I didn't want to feel like... Uh, I took the, took the top end part here and was like, nope, I ain't going to touch that. And now due to financial strengths, I'm going to have to do it myself, but uh, I'm going to go in the disclaimer about taking things into the off the beaten path shops. Now I took this to a shop in a town, you know, 10, 15 minutes away from me to one of them, you know, smaller, uh, small engine ATV shops, just because they were, from what everybody told me, they were cheaper. They were cheaper, but not going to be in the long run, at least the way they do it, but what it's cost me in other senses is not necessarily cheaper. Now this is my high low or neutral reverse shift liver. The knob just screws up, which it's supposed to, but something I just noticed that's missing when I was starting to take this apart. There's supposed to be a nut under here that you tension up to the bottom of that knob to set where it stays. That's gone. Upon further inspection, uh, right down in there, there's a nut missing that's supposed to hold the cage on that holds for the, where the screws go down through for the air cleaner. There's supposed to be four. There's only three in here. Uh, there's two bolts that hold the whole air box in and the front one there is not even tight It's it's in there, but it's not cinched, cinched down to the rubber That's you know supposed to be the dampener for that Among other things There was screws holding the side plastics on and I don't apparently have those anymore because this side, uh, this whole console piece comes off right here. You take the uh, screws out for the battery hold down. And then there's two screws on each side. I only had took these out, but my front ones are missing. You take the, the shifter off. And then you take this battery out, which I'm just going to kind of gently stand up here while I take this out. That apparently needs to be badly cleaned again. I'm just going to set my battery back down in there. Let's just delve into this a little farther. Now I had a new air cleaner put on, which they looks like they did do, but judging by the amount of residue inside the thing, they didn't clean out the... They soaked the pre-cleaner down, which you're supposed to do, but I'm guessing they didn't wring it out very well because there's a lot of residue down in there. Oh yeah, this thing's just dripping. That thing is just it's still getting my finger wet. So they definitely soaked that fucker down. I don't think they ringed it out very well. Yeah, there's just all sorts of residue in here. Yeah, now you can see there's one, two, three, number four is missing. Which is nice. So I'll have to get one of these out and find some at the hardware store. Hopefully they got something. There was other miscellaneous things there. This thing has cooling lines that go to the carburetor for, I'm guessing, for keeping everything the same temperature, cooling and heating wise. And some vacuum lines and stuff that were, I mean, they were on there, but they were, the clamps were still slid all the way back and they were never put back on. Little things like that. But I'm going to get some more of this off and then I'll get back with you guys here shortly. 
Actually, I'll just let you guys kind of follow along as I'm going here. 10 mil and an 8 mil are going to be your biggest things. There's four screws down here on each, uh, around each carburetor throat inside the box here, which hold the box down to the carburetor as well. So those all got to come out. I'll show you here in a second. I'm just going to, I cracked them all loose, I'm just going to screw them back. And I'll hopefully, if I remember, I can lift this off once I get the last bolt out. I really love having a lot of light in my garage, though. That's about the only thing I like about this. I had a nice LED uh, shop light, one of them, like 1,000 or 1,500 lumen LED shop lights that you can plug in, but uh, I gave one to my neighbor, and I had two more sitting on the shelf in the box yet down in my basement, and they're just magically gone, so don't know where that went, but it was nice of whoever got them. Hope they enjoy them. Okay, so there's, yeah, like I said, four screws around each of the throats, because that's what holds the base bottom of this down. Then I got a couple screw or bolts on the outside here. <clears throat> Which those are 10 mil. Nice. They didn't even didn't even hook that back up. That's awesome. At least I don't think they did. Let me see. That was nice. They didn't even... Yeah, I'm going to show you this now. Well, there's a couple hoses that slide onto the bottom of here. This one's just like a drain. I can't remember if that's one or not, or if that's just part of the casting in the mold. But there's this one right here, which I think feeds off the air box as well. But there's also this the front air snorkel, and... The, didn't they didn't even tighten the clamps back down it's still loose never put the clamp back on so that's nice oh yeah here's that other hose that's supposed to be hooked up to the bottom of that nipple that I showed you right here I don't think that was actually hooked on it was just sitting down in there well, that's 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 awesome but yeah here's what we're looking at dual carbs now here's the part where I decided I wasn't going to work on this before, and I'm not sure how far we're going to get this time either. Honestly, I don't even know if they took the carbs off this thing last time, because they look awfully dirty yet. If I had to guess, they probably just sprayed shit through it and hoped it worked, so who knows. But, I'm going to see what I can do to figure out how to get this off, and I'll be back with you. Okay, we're back. After some struggles. Now, mind you, if you start this project, just fill up your swear jar if you have one before you start the project, and you'll be covered. Had to bust out the burn-yourself heating lamp light, because these were great back in the day, but 
Oh, I really wish I had my LED one right now because that thing is whew, putting off a lot of heat. Trying to set things on fire. Okay. So, this can be done with basic hand tools. Uh, 10 mil, 7 mil, 8 mil screwdrivers to get to this point. Um, on that note, I have the carburetors lifted off of its off the boots. Okay, and you see this thing has cooling lines that come in right here. But now I can get access to this this float bowl or whatever you want to call it. Okay, so poor design flaw in this. There's the screw type clamps on the boots. The back one faces this way, which you can get at through down here. I actually just took the side panel and the uh, vent for the uh, uh, belt drive out, and I have and I took the shift linkage and unbolted it from here. Took the cover off and folded it out of the way. And you can actually get in from down here with the screwdriver to screw the back one off. The front boot one was facing the opposite way, which goes to the side with the exhaust. And has other things in the way but there's this little uh, heat shield in here which has three bolts there's one here one on the bottom side of the exhaust and one up here I took the bottom one and that top one off and loosened that front one and folded it down and then you can just ever so carefully get a screwdriver long enough one back to that back to that uh, screw and then it just lifted off and then I just took some uh, old uh, clothing an old pair of my kids pants and just shoved them in the holes but I'm gonna get this uh, see if I can get this uh, off and see what I see I'll bring you back in here and okay back with you again I did get it all the way out cuz uh, I did some checking and looking now this thing's got a fuel pump, you turn the key on it pumps fuel into the bowls. And I thought when it was running, or when it were turning the key on, I thought it was leaking right up at the top of this corner here. Now I got it, I took this bowl off, there's a little bit of crud over there I gotta clean, but the gasket's still good, I'm gonna take them both off and, I'm gonna give this whole thing a clean down again anyways, but it's not coming from there, not so much there, but more so there. Now let me just tip this into the light, maybe. There's a plastic shaft going through there. I'm guessing that's the fuel line, because the fuel line comes in here, and this is a dual carburetor bolted together. I'm guessing there's a, that's the fuel line that goes through into the second carburetor. And I'm guessing there's an O-ring or something in there that must be gone bad and leaking. So... For those of you tearing into one of these, I'll give you a quick few hints or tips here. Okay, so these two cables over here, which should be on the exhaust side or driver's side, you know, depending on whether you're sitting in a vehicle or not. These are your carb or uh, choke for your choke up here that runs these down here. I have one that's kind of bad, but uh, maybe I'll see if I can get one. Otherwise, it's just gonna have to do. These are what go on this side of the carburetor because the carburetor sits in there like so. And they hook in on each side on the bottom. Uh, right in there and right in there. If you can just take the bottom screw out of the little bracket that holds them right here and here. Just give them a firm tug and they pop out. I was having a heck of a time trying to figure it out but there's just an O-ring on there. And this is the bracket that retains it in there when it's screwed to the bottom of the carburetor and holds the bracket. So they just press in there. Uh, your throttle cable is a single cable on the front here. A little plastic cover, one screw, or a little locking tab thing. You just pop it over, pop it off. You can spin the butterflies up enough to pop the cable out through that latch, the hole there, and then just unscrew it a little bit there's a locking nut on the inside and outside just twist that a little bit until it comes loose and the cable comes out and then it's just unhook your uh 
vent lines and uh, cooling lines. But I'm going to do the thing I really don't want to do. I'm going to take that bolt and that bolt out because they go all the way through to that bolt and that bolt. And uh, see how this comes apart. So I'll be right back. Alright, I got that split apart. Now as I suspected, this is the fuel supply line to the second or the front carburetor. And it does have uh, O-rings. Now, to the naked eye, the O-rings don't look bad. But there's definitely some corrosion and stuff on them. I'm going to clean this up and get new O-rings on it. Same thing with the... The gasket in here, the O-ring in the float bowl was fine. I'm just going to clean it up, take it apart and clean it up a little better. So I'm probably going to go through... Well, I'm definitely going to get a couple cans of carb cleaner. I'm going to give these a good blast down. Because there's a bunch of junk in there. I'll probably just take them apart, the bowls and everything off, and uh, blow these carburetors all apart. And just uh, clean them up good again. But I'm definitely going to get some O-rings and... Uh, put these back together yeah they're kind of smushed and let me see if I can uh, peel one of these off here I'm guessing they're definitely I mean they're 16 years old they've probably seen some bad gas by now definitely have seen some better days Mainly, I'm just looking to make sure this plastic cylinder is not cracked, but I'm not seeing anything. The o ring's definitely got some, uh, looks like dried corrosion type stuff stuck to it and like a little flat spot in it, so I would definitely say the o rings probably need to be replaced because they're probably not. Probably not working as well as they should. Because so I noticed the O-rings on everything else are a little more uh, round yet. These are kind of flatted out, flattened out. But I'm not seeing anything broken on the barrel. You can see. Sorry, this probably won't focus in on that. But that white stuff on there is oxidization and stuff so it's eaten away at the o-ring a little bit and flattened it out and that was on both the o-rings on each end so this one's not quite as bad as the other one but it's still not good so that's my fuel leak so now i definitely know for sure that these guys never took these carbs off really or did much of anything really i'm guessing they just blew it up blew all well, I, even, I mean, if you you do a carb job, you should just take the carbs off and take them apart, clean the whole thing off inside, outside. None of this crap would still be on there because I've only had it running for a year and I've probably maybe put a couple miles on it. Mainly that was just plowing snow over the winter. So they didn't really do a good job of things. And they probably would have caught, or if they would have took it apart. I actually, I think the carb kits, maybe they do come with the O-rings for all this stuff. I can't remember. <laughs> But, I think while I'm in here, I'm going to source some O-rings for, because I think that's, that's the antifreeze down there. I think this is just a, I think that's just a, I'm not sure, that goes up to the airbox, I can't, I'm not sure what that does, but it'll come to me afterwards. So yeah, I'm going to give, uh. Give these a good cleaning and then uh, get them installed, but uh, I'm going to put this up for now as a video, and then maybe when I get things put back together and in, I will do a recap of uh, how it went and everything. But that's the gist of taking this apart. This is probably not the correct way. You probably should do things differently than I did, but in the sense of me not knowing, that's how it worked out, and it got it apart and I figured out what was wrong.